What is the roadmap to defeat self-sabotage, negative thinking, and learned helplessness? In these unprecedented times, you must get connected, get growing, get certain, and get attitude. The Get Attitude Podcast. Welcome to the GAP, the Get Attitude Podcast. We are live on all of our social sites, and it's always so fun to be live. And ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you today, we have a guest that I believe is truly one of the greatest coaches. Now, look, at there's a million coaches, right? But this guy uh, not only coaches, but coaches for and has been entrusted with people like the great Bob Proctor, the great Les Brown. And here's what's so cool. On today's episode, you are going to get to interact. You are going to get to witness him in person. You're going to get to see what I truly believe is one of the premier coaches in America right now firsthand. If you are live, if you are tuning in, and if you want to ask him a question, I want you to put it in the comments and Jason can bring it up. But guys, I'm telling you, we are so honored to have Mr. John Tallarico. He is the founder and and, uh, podcast host of The Million in You. And He has a program, a six-month coaching program, where you actually get to talk to him, not some hired hand to vet you, but actually the John Tallarico. All you got to do is go to millioninyou.com for that one-on-one opening coaching session to see if it's good. But look it, we are here to help you to get from where you are to where you want to be, from who you are to who you want to become. And we are doing that in season two with the influencers and innovators of of um, life, personal development, and business development. And today, uh, man, it's so cool to have a gentleman who's done so much for me, a guy that I've been following, Mr. John Tallarico. John, welcome to the Get Attitude Podcast. Thank you, Glenn. Good morning. Good morning to all your listeners. Super excited to be here. Really, thank you for that great introduction. Uh, this is, uh, I can't think of a better podcast because attitude is everything, as you know, Glenn. And so, Honored to be here with you. Very good. Well, we're just going to um, talk a little bit and and open up about attitude and get into some some of the really cool things that you do and do for people. When you think about um, all the people you've coached, when you think about all the famous people you've worked with, um, do you have a personal definition of attitude? And what do you do to keep your attitude uh, on point, keep it positive, and keep it infectious for those who come into contact with you? Sure, great question, Glenn. And for me, I believe the best definition I heard of attitude is one from my my good friend and mentor, Bob Proctor. He says, your attitude really is the composite of your thoughts, feelings, and actions. And it's like that cake mix, right? And so we want to understand how we can control our thinking, which then causes us to feel in a certain way. And then everything, as you know, Glenn, works based on law. That causes us to act in a certain way. So when we understand that attitude We can alter our lives by altering our attitudes of mind, said William James, right? Attitude is everything. And when we change that and develop those right kind of thoughts, that will cause us to feel a different way than we've ever felt before, causing us to achieve the results that we've never had before, but that we, all of us, truly want. What do I do to maintain that that good attitude? You can cultivate a great attitude by, I believe, focusing on gratitude every day. Nice. And what does that mean? So what I do, Glenn, every day is I write out 10 things or people that I'm grateful for. What I've started doing lately is not only am I focusing on the things that are already in my life, but I want you, your listeners all to start being grateful for the things that are already coming. Why? Because when you make a decision to change your attitude, when you start to live your life from the end, where you see the wish fulfilled already, you know it's already done. And so I've started writing out five things that are already in my life, obviously my kids and uh, uh, you know, depending on the t- on the year, Glenn, Michigan football gets on there, but then also <laughs> the things that are coming, which I know are already be- going to be done because I maintain that attitude. And uh, what I've learned is we can go from an I can't attitude to I did. 
And it's so important every day that we control uh, how we think. Now, uh, sometimes, you know, what, what I found is attitude, uh, you know, there's no magic potion. People just aren't necessarily born with the attitude. But people have had to go through and grow and learn in their attitude. I'd love to hear maybe your story when John Tallarico had a not so good attitude. What was that? What was that <laughs> time in your life? Who were you at that time? What was going on? And then um, who did you become after you got out of that? Who helped you out of that? And what was your attitude both when it was bad and then when it was good? Tell us that story. Sure, Glenn. Thank you very much. Uh, I grew up in Flint, Michigan. Uh, broken home at a time where that wasn't really common. And I, I kind of developed an attitude that that thing, life was not fair, right? That why is this happening to me at an early age when it's not happening to any of my friends? Now, my one saving grace was my grandmother who always told me that I could be and do whatever I wanted if I just maintained a good attitude and treated people with respect and kindness. And so she, she was the one who kind of looked out for me but I had one foot in that good attitude and one foot in that bad attitude. And that bad attitude overrode anything that I thought I was gonna do. And it, it caused me to sabotage my life. And I was fired from every job I ever had. Uh, went through my 20s and 30s, you know, with that attitude of uh, my life was determined by outside circumstances that uh, I didn't really have control, yet my financial future my, was in the hands of circumstances outside of me. And I started listening to people like Bob Proctor, like Les Brown talk about, it didn't matter what had happened to me or my circumstances, but I could change my life. And then I read a book, Glenn, uh, Victor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. Yes. And I read in there that he said, everything can be taken from a man or a woman, but one thing, and it was the, the last of human freedoms. And that was to choose our attitude in any given set of circumstances and to choose one's own way. And I realized at that time that I had to stop blaming everyone for my life, that I was 100% fully responsible. And that I, I had to change my attitude, Glenn. I had a very bad attitude, uh, short with people, uh, unhappy, um, a victim, right? A victim of, you know, life wasn't fair. And uh, yet I realized in that moment after I read that book that I was the problem. Mm. And I had to realize that I needed to change my behavior, my attitude, my thoughts, my feelings. And the minute I started to do that, when things started to change in my life. And uh, when we talk about changing your life, uh, I, one thing I thought that was so cool is I think you're my age, maybe a little older not to exploit it, but like you have these young, beautiful kids at a, at an older age. Uh, what's that dynamic like? And what of the, what is that whole dynamic done for your attitude? And what advice do you have mm -hmm. for guys that are our age having babies? Yeah, Glenn, you know, I, I, I got to that half century mark and, and next thing I know, I had a, a beautiful daughter uh, and then a year and a half later, I had a beautiful son. And so um, I, that right there is a reminder each and every day for me to have a great attitude. And so what that has done is reinvigorated me to really realize that why I'm here, they're why I'm here. I want to leave them with the impression that they can be, do, and have whatever they want, that they are unstoppable, that they're unlimited, that they they can connect to the right kind of attitude, listen to programs like this, and, and understand that with the right attitude, they can do anything that they want in the world. And speaking of my kids, Glenn, it was that moment, actually, when I saw a picture of them. They um, they live in different, different uh, actually, different countries. My daughter's in Toronto, and my son is in Atlanta, where I live. And they were able to meet a year and a half ago. And that was one of the most beautiful days of my life where they were able to meet each other. And, and, and my daughter got to meet her brother. Yeah. And last year, when all of this stuff is going on out there, Glenn, I, I took on an attitude that I was in charge of, of me, that no pandemic or anything else was gonna define my financial success. I looked at that picture of my two kids together and I said to myself, you know, one day they're gonna ask me, dad, what is it that you do? And I realized, Glenn, that I was doing stuff for everyone else and not doing stuff for myself. I'd gone to school, the University of Michigan, to become a teacher. I always wanted to teach, but then I started listening to the outside world. Teachers don't make any money. Why would you want to do that? And what did I do? The complete opposite. I went and got an MBA in finance and you know, proceeded to not do what I wanted to do for decades. So uh, it was in that moment I said, I'm going to do what I love. And I made a committed decision over, it's just been a year now 
to go into coaching. And I absolutely love it. You're right. I have amazing clients, been blessed to travel the world with people like Les Brown and, and uh, Akon and uh, work with people like Damon John and Grant Cardone, Bob Proctor, Sonia Riccotti, and, and just been really blessed. And that started the minute I changed my attitude, Glenn. Yeah, that's so cool. And so uh, certainly some very notable uh, clients. Can we just, I, I just would love to know, what's Akon's attitude like? What is the attitude lesson that maybe you learned from that legend? You know, it's it's an attitude of no matter what. It's an attitude of I have an end goal in mind, right? and that's the place I'm going to live from. I, mm. I don't know if you or your listeners have read a book called The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. But Goddard talks about living from the end. And how do we do that? We use our, the greatest gift we've ever been gifted, our imagination, to see ourselves as the person we wish to become and, and not thinking that we need to get to somewhere, everyone, but that we're already there. And then we take massive daily action. And that's what he does. And he maintains a great attitude every day, treats everyone uh, with kindness. I've never been able to travel the world with him for the last six, seven years. Never seen him be mean to any fan ever. Now, time permitting, he has always, always stopped to take a picture, give an autograph, and obviously he can't stay there all day, but he has never been rude. So he he has that great attitude, and, he, and he's very grateful for all the, the blessings that he's received. I think I saw a video of you dancing during his show or something on stage. Uh, or like, Glenn, what the you hell? Don't is... lose your listeners, please, Glenn. <laughs> I, I told people when I posted that, don't be stealing my moves, Glenn. But yes, that's... Uh... <laughs> So go to JohnTallarico.com or hit him on YouTube. But yeah, it's it's uh, pretty, pretty cool to uh, see that. How did that relationship start? How did you find him or how did he find you? You know, I uh, to go to the theme of your show, Glenn, when you take on an attitude that you can do anything and that you are going to be uh, relentless in your pursuit of what you want, you, you can achieve things like this. So I didn't have any connections when I first started out, obviously growing up in Flint, Michigan. Uh, Les Brown, I, my grandma used to make me listen to him on the radio every Sunday, first AME church in, in Detroit. And I promised her one day I'd meet him. Same with Bob Proctor. And so you have to make a decision. And so I had through some other connections, a very wealthy client, billionaire client in India, who called me and asked me if I could get Akon for his birthday party. It was a private birthday party in India. So when opportunity comes, you always say yes. Don't yeah. worry about the how, as I teach all my clients, don't worry about the how, that's not your business. Just focus on the end result. So I told him, of course I can get it. Then what did I do? Where, where do we all go when we want to research things? You know, the you know, google.com, Glenn, I looked to see where he was going to be performing in the next few weeks. He was going to be in Toronto. I flew to Toronto thinking I had, it was a done deal, right? I had someone with money and I'm just going to march in there. Well, there was 10,000 people at that event. No way I was getting backstage, had no connections to get backstage, but I was, I was willing to not give up. I went back to Google that day and found out there was an after party that evening. So I went to that location. It was in a, in a small strip mall and there he was. And so I saw him, woman next to him, and I just waited and bided my time, Glenn. I guess I, I was a, you know, I guess we call me a uh, stalker, a stalker at the time, right? <laughs> yeah. Love so it. I waited for two hours until she went to the restroom and I went up to her and I just said, ma'am, I'm, I'm too old, not a groupie, don't need a photo autograph don't even need to meet him, but I have an opportunity. If you could just introduce me to the person that I could speak to, the money will be wired next week. And, and I would like to discuss how we can get this done. She was great. Didn't even meet him that night, Glenn. Took me to a person within days. We had that transaction done. Within a few weeks, I was uh, meeting Akon in London. Five of us flew to India. And then from there, um, next thing I know, I'm, I'm in, in New York in the Empire State Building with Akon and another business partner of ours. We had an 11,000 square foot office. It was a couple of years later. Damon John and the FUBU guys had the other half. Um, and that's what's possible when you just when you don't take no for an answer and you have that great attitude that you teach all your all your listeners each and every every episode, Glenn. I sent you a uh, Facebook message before this of Arnold Schwarzenegger and his mindset as he became the world champ. I don't know if you were able to watch it, but oh my gosh, that just blew me away. And he said, have a vision and don't listen yeah. to the naysayers, right? That was the big one. What's your yeah. advice um, to your clients who um, have the dream, but they yeah. their biggest naysayer is number one themselves, but it's going to obviously be the other people. How do you overcome the naysayers sure. and ultimately the biggest naysayer for most people yourself? How do you do that? 
Great question, Glenn. I call that the, the committee, right? It's this thing here that holds daily meetings without our approval, right? right? And how do we deal, how do we quiet the committee so that we can actually conquer? Uh, you talk about the gap here, but there is a knowing doing gap that we all have, right? We know a lot of stuff. A lot of your listeners, they, they've been to seminars, they read books, they listen to you, Glenn, they, they know what to do. And yet we don't necessarily do what we know how to do. Why is that? Well, we have to start to understand and look at paradigms, look at our habits, and then start to recognize and develop the awareness to know that we are doing these non-productive activities each and every day, that we try to convince ourselves that we're busy, but we're not very productive. Now I'll go back to the very beginning. We have to have a goal. We are, we are goal-seeking individuals. And so most people don't have a goal, Glenn. They don't have any idea what they want because they don't want to spend the time to think. Most people would rather die than think. So what I encourage all my clients to do in the very beginning is we come up with what I call a C-type goal. Those are things that you've never done before, but these are, these are wants. This is where you build the fantasy in your mind. You don't know how it's going to happen, but it excites you again. And then what do we do? The only way to bust through those old habits and paradigms is through constant repetition. We watch the same lesson twice a day for two weeks at a time. And we work on our conquering that knowing doing gap. Now, how do we do that? By reminding ourselves that we were created in, in pure perfection, that we're, you know, everything is here in one form or another. The way that you and I are having this call, Glenn, has always been here. And so supply is unlimited. So when you recognize that, you start to realize that you can have whatever you want by doing things in a certain way, not just by doing certain things, but doing things a certain way. Everything works by law. And if you look at nature, nature's perfect. And so what we do is we start to change our mindset. We start to understand our marvelous mind. Most of us, you ask them to work on changing their mind and they'll think and ask them to give you a picture. They'll draw a picture of the brain. The brain is no more your mind than is your fingernail. So we have to start to understand what our mind is. And that's on a very basic level, a conscious and subconscious part of that. Mm. We want to get into the subconscious part of the mind. That's where 95% of everything is is programmed and it's a moral and it doesn't care what you plant and so that's i always say we have a you got to be careful what you're planting in the garden of your mind weeds or wisdom people like you this show like this giving people the wisdom to know that they can deal with the committee and then we all hit it glenn we come up against the terror barrier so how do we blast through the terror barrier well we have to start changing our daily habits we have to develop a daily success ritual all my clients have a daily success ritual. They start the day the same way. And most importantly, I have a daily accountability group. They all check in. It's not to make anyone feel bad, but it's simply an awareness exercise. Why? Because the results will always tell who's doing the work. You can guarantee success, Glenn, if people will just follow the blueprint, right? And that involves doing things in a certain way. And then we take massive daily action and we track what we do. And so, uh, we've had amazing success with our clients, and, and that's how you can bust through the terror barrier, battle the, the committee and quiet that noise, and then we learn to live from the inside out. Why would you ever want to listen to someone who's not even living the life of their dreams, Glenn? Why would you ever want to put your financial future, your destiny, in the hands or circumstances of things outside of you? So when you realize how truly powerful you are, that you are in complete control of you, then you can have whatever you want. And then each and every day is a great day, Glenn. And this took me four decades to get. And this is why I share this openly with other people. My clients is because everyone is here to do something great, Glenn. We all have what I call the million in you. It's that one unique thing that we do better than anyone else on the planet. And our mission, our job while we're here is to discover what that is, to extract it, to bring it out so that we can change our lives and then change the lives of our family and friends, our community, our uh, you know, our country and eventually the world. And so it's so important that we have a goal and we stay laser focused on that. You know, one of my favorite verses from, from scripture is a double-minded man is unstable in all ways, right? That comes from James. And so we want to be very clear about what it is that we want, not what we think we can get, but what is it that we truly, really want? Mm, I love that. I love that. And you guys, if you're looking to bridge the gap in your life, in your relationships, in your business, in your personal uh, life as well, you want to go to millioninyou.com, right? Millioninyou.com. You can sign up and you can actually have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with this innovative and influential coach, Mr. John Tallarico. So uh, all you got to do, there's his, there's his calendar. He's he's like, let's go. I'm, I'm more than happy. Let's Thank you, That's Jason. with me, Glenn, as well. You're not going to get one of my one of my other team members just for Glenn. Uh, I 
told him you guys will get a 30 minute free consultation with myself, the million and And yeah, would love to help all of you figure out how we can bridge that gap and, and get you where you want to be. That's so cool. So you have clients that are millionaires and billionaires. I want to know, is there a difference between a millionaire and a billionaire? Um, and what's the difference between millionaires and billionaires to those people that are not there? What, what, what's your take on all that? Oh, uh, yeah, there's, um, I've got people even who've sold their, their car to get into my program, Glenn, you know, just people, average people, you know, like you and I, and those are my favorite ones, right? Because, uh, we're opening up a whole new world of possibility to all of them. Mm. The, the celebrity clients, the millionaires and billionaires are, are, you know, they're no different than us, but they have a different attitude, right? They're, they're disciplined. They are willing to take full responsibility for everything in their life. I think the difference between the millionaires and billionaires is, is actually attitude mm. and unlimited. Uh, my client in India, I have, I have two or three clients that are billionaires, actually billionaires. These aren't photo ops either. These are actual people that are in my phone that I do business with. And one of them uh, owns one of the football clubs in England. And they just have an attitude that it's already done. Right. And I think that comes just from understanding how the universe works is that uh, everything's created twice and they've already created it in their mind. And then they just watch and take daily action as it manifests itself in the physical world. And, but you know, they, they have, they get up the same way we do Glenn. Right. And, and, and I think, what has allowed me to develop these kind of relationships is that something I teach all my clients is that you always want to leave people with the impression of increase. All my relationships have started because I was willing to do something and be of service first, rather than ask for something in return for myself up front. And I think that's where most people get the gap wrong. They get the attitude wrong is that I, what's in it for me. No, it has to be what, how can I help? What right. can I do for you? What can I do to, what can I do to help Glenn? You know, you, you wanted uh, less Brown done, not a problem. Right. Uh, and so we have to realize that we're all in this together. Yeah. That thank you. Not my contacts, your contacts, and we're part of uh, one, right? right? Whatever you believe you can, we can all disagree about the before and after, but while we're here, let's help each other out. Let's know that it, you can have whatever you want. doesn't mean that Glenn or myself has, doesn't get to have what we want. And that requires a shift in attitude. I just so good. And, and thank you for getting Les Brown. That was a huge day for me. And, and uh, I feel like I owe you one, John, and I will get it done for you. The, <laughs> but I know that's not how not you operate. All, no zero sum stuff here. Um, you mentioned something that I think a lot of people have uh, an issue with is discovering, right? You, you said the process begins with discovering who you, who yes. you want to be. There's people I know listening and watching and going, I don't know what, I don't know how to discover. I'm lost. I, yeah. I got too much of a committee talking to me. What's yeah. a, what's an exercise? Somebody that's listening to this right now, sure. who's feeling lost, who's going, God, I just got no purpose in my life and I don't know how to discover what I want. How do you help people find that discovery or what's the process? Uh, Great, great question, Glenn, because I was there. And for those of you listening who maybe are just are feeling frustrated, stuck, confused, some of you maybe even just ready to give up. I understand it because I've been there. I don't want you to think that I just life went from zero to hundred. No, it's been a, a struggle. I speak openly about some of the situations I've had to overcome. So I understand it, you know, I, um, I like to say I'm like the United Nations of dysfunction and drama, right? So, but what I've been able to do is overcome that. And I'll share with you how, first of all, is. I had to realize that I had to take a cold, hard look at myself. I had Glenn for years avoided look at myself in the mirror. I would go and wash my face and I would do it on an angle and maybe peek up from an angle quickly because I didn't like who I was. I was disappointed in the choices I'd made. I, and I had to be honest that I didn't like myself, let alone love myself. And so what I did is I read a book. All of you should read this book called Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. And I started to learn and understand about self-image. And I started to realize that I had a very poor self-image of myself and that my results were never going to outperform that. But I realized and understood in that book that we have two self-images, the one that we project to the outside world, that everything's great, no problem, you want something done, come to John, I'll take care of it for you. But then there was the other self-image and that's the one that we live with on our subconscious level, which is that I wasn't good enough, that I was unhappy, that I, I messed up and, and you know, 
ruined every opportunity I had been given. Now that is a false self-image. That's where the committee comes in. So what we have to realize is one, that we have it. And then two, we need to change it. So how do we do that? And we start to, to create a self-image of the person that we wish to become. What do I, I have all my clients create a self-image vision board. Mm. I have them take characteristics of the people that they admire and then incorporate those into their own self-image. And I have them stand in front of a mirror. Something sound very, it sounds very silly, but they read the self-confidence formula. It takes two minutes a day. It's in Think and Grow Rich. You can all print it out. It's one page of one piece of paper. They stand in front of that mirror. And we start to realize that we are something very special and very unique, that we are powerful, that we are magnificent, that we are beautiful, that we can actually learn to like ourselves and that we can love ourselves. And, and then we start to make different choices. We start to change how we think about ourselves, which causes us to change our attitude. And guess what? We start to feel better. Now, when you start to feel better, guess what? Opportunity, people, places, and things start to show up in your life. Now, other people are gonna start to say, oh, Glenn, you're so lucky, or boy, what a coincidence. No, it's because you change your, your frequency, you change your vibration, and, and everything's all, all, always moving in some form or another. And so when you realize that you can change your, your frequency, you change your vibration, your feelings, the universe, God, whatever you wanna call it, will respond to that new feeling with a new reaction because everything works on, on law, right? Action, reaction. And guess what? You start to get new results. You start to realize that, yes, I can turn my annual income into a monthly income, that I can have that dream car, that dream relationship, that I can give my two week notice to a place that I don't even like. Now, why, when we start to wake up, Glenn, why would you ever want to spend one second more at a place you don't like with people you don't feel inspired by? And yet we can go and give our notice not knowing what's next, but knowing that we have something inside of us that we truly would love to do. And that's where coming in and setting your goal is. Yes. But a CTEP goal, something you've never done before. And so uh, that's what I, I did, Glenn. It, it requires 100% responsibility, requires us to be honest and, and leave in our ego and asking for help, Glenn. It's just um, my clients realize that this is not just a six month program. This is a way of life. It's a family. And, and so they start to develop the awareness that they can they control themselves right you control you and so uh it's been an amazing ride Glenn. yeah that's very cool and so you said it's called the self-confidence formula that you have people do think and grow rich it's in the book you can get it you can the google book. it the self-confidence so look at guys john has and gals john has given us several great resources man search for meaning the power of awareness psycho cybernetics and the self-confidence formula if look at what he's saying is beautiful it's good it's meaningful and it will help you bridge the gap but there, there are four other resources he just gave you that if, if you're feeling like you're stuck and, and that there's more to your life go get those four books read the books and start um, John, talk to me about today's time, environment, and world. Like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. People are mm -hmm. crazy. Um, the, the media, the politics, the world seems like a tremendously different place maybe than it was a year ago, three years ago, five years ago, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. What's your thought on worldview uh, and and how to um, how, how do you coaching people to not let the worldview and all this craziness affect them so negatively? Because I what I see and, and when I'm interacting is people are so upset, their attitudes are instantly affected by the craziness that is going on in what we call the world today. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. Of course, Glenn, thank you very much. And I, it's, it's the news, the nonsense and the negativity, right? They are instilling in us a, a fear-based way of life. My clients, the ones who follow what we teach, myself included, have had the best last 12, 18 months of their lives as far as financially. They've learned to live from the inside out, not listening to all that, that noise and nonsense, not living from a place of fear, knowing that they decide what they want for their financial future. They, they are the ones who determine their destiny. And what do they do? They don't listen to that stuff. You know, they fill their minds with like-minded people. They listen to shows like yours, Glenn. They, they read these kind of books that we've been sharing today. They take action to guard their thoughts. Because if we allow that fear to creep in, what's gonna happen? It keeps us in a very low 
vibration. It keeps us in a place of worry, doubt, anxiety. Now, what do you think you're going to attract in your life when you're thinking those kind of thoughts? Whereas on the other hand, remember what I said earlier, everything has an opposite, the law of polarity. Well, there's that fear. Opposite of fear is faith. Not blind faith. That's not worth anything. Unwavering faith. To know that you are God's highest form of creation, that everything's already here, and that you can have whatever you want. And so when you move with unwavering faith, your life starts to accelerate. You start to achieve success, and things start to happen to you very quickly. Now, where people get a little bit hung up, Glenn, is that that requires us to believe in things we cannot see. And yet that's where all the greatest miracles, the greatest advancements over the course of human history have happened because a man or woman was willing to not believe what they saw, right? Seeing is not believing at all. It's believing that's a scene, right? Our eyes deceive us. And so we want to live from our six highest mental faculties, our, our, our spiritual gifts, I call them, right? Our imagination, our intuition, our memory, reason, perception, and our will, the ability to focus. We have a, a problem with focus. We allow and get bombarded by so much nonsense, right? We do this, right, all day long. And we're swiping and we're worrying about likes and all this kind of stuff. When we are giving away our power, not realizing that we control our future. Mm. And so what we do is that first hour of the morning, so important, Glenn, daily success ritual. We realize that we can't manage time. We can only manage our activities. And I'll go back to the thing I said earlier. You have to have a goal. When you are laser focused on that C type goal, Glenn, you don't allow any outside nonsense to take you off track. And we have accountability, a daily accountability group. Accountability is your insurance policy to success. So for those of you listening, find an accountability partner, even if it's as simple as from Monday through Friday to check in and say, okay, I didn't listen and watch the news today, but I, I created my own news feed. Love or, it. Yeah, surround yourself, uh, get in a group of like-minded people, right? We have a, you know, there's so many wonderful people out there that that are from a different type of mindset, a different type of attitude. And so you want to take action, but you want to take the right kind of action. What do you think? Um, people are watching this uh, live right now, but there's this will drop in three or four weeks. And if you're listening to this and you're not live, John, what I want to know is what's going through the person's head that goes, man, this stuff's all good. But maybe, maybe it's just not for me. I mean, for God's sakes, it's a leading coach in America who's saying, I'll give the Gap listeners a free 30 minutes, and they're talking themselves out of it. They, they, want, they want to go to John Tallarico or themillioninyou.com and say, all right, my life is worth 30 minutes, but they're going to talk themselves out of it. First sure. of all, what are they thinking? Second of all, why are they thinking it? And third of all, what could we say or you say to maybe help them take the chance to yeah. recognize their destiny and their greatness? Thank you very much, Glenn. It's the committee's talking, right? We have to realize that we've been so programmed to think small, to think real, be realistic, right? And yet we're having this call because someone was willing to change their thinking. They were willing to take a chance. And so one, awareness, the only issue in the world is lack of awareness. So when you realize that everything's already here, you know, the Wright brothers, they didn't get a piece of paper in the mail that said, okay, Orville Wilbur put these things together and then you can know. They knew that everything worked with and by law and that they found a way to work with law. And now we've, we are able to travel all over the world. So one, recognize that you are here for a reason, that you have that million in you inside of you, that it doesn't matter what has happened up until now. And for those of you who don't know my story, uh, if I can do this, any of you can. So number one, recognize what's speaking to you. It's not your, it's the committee. Number two, this is absolutely no cost, free 30 minute call. Let's see if I can show you how to get you from where you are to where you wanna be. Let's get you excited again about your life. And the third thing is Glenn is that, oh, well, you know, they're gonna try, John's gonna try to sell me something. No, I'm gonna try to enroll you in your greatness in, the fact that you can have and do and be whatever you want in your life, that if you want to leave your job and start your entrepreneurial career, no problem. You can achieve quantum leaps that your goal and dream doesn't have to take six months. It can happen today. What we need to do is, is change your belief system, change your attitude. And so we want to change that belief system by actually changing our behaviors. And the other thing is, Glenn, is that we'll find ways to justify things that we want, right? I can guarantee you right now, everyone's got one of these, $1,000, dollars and yet we won't invest money in the greatest supercomputer on the planet right here. So one, 
recognize your worth. Two, be honest. If you're struggling, this is now more important than no, it's more important than ever that you now book that call. And let me show you how I've been able to do this for hundreds of people all over the world to change their attitude, change their mind and teach them how to master their thinking so that they can now think their way into the results that they want in their life. So take action. Let's, let's change the course and direction of your life. Let me help show you what's possible and not only what's possible, what, but what's necessary for each and every one of you. You're here for a reason. I love it, John Tallarico, uh, the founder of The Million in You, and you have an opportunity if you want. You know, my podcast, we hope, uh, bridges the gap from who you are to who you want to become. This is a guy that actually does more than just the podcast. This is a guy that will work with you. And my mission is to help people get attitude in their life. And I enroll and I align and I create friendships with some of the best coaches in America to help you do that. And John is certainly one of them. John, now we're going to have a little fun as we uh, roll down our podcast in this thing that we called Knowledge Through the Decades. And uh, what we do is we ask you what the attitude lesson is that you learned at different points of your life. And this helps us, this helps us get to know you. So this is fun. Uh, Don't worry about, you're going to be profound because I know, I know (laughs) you. Um, But, but uh, let's just have fun and and walk through your life and the lessons of your life, the attitude lessons of your life. And we always like to start with childbirth. Uh, Again, we know that you may or may not remember being born but what do you believe the uh, essence or the attitude lessons of birth or new beginnings are uh, i i believe the attitude of then was wow adventure this, everything is so new and so exciting discovery the attitude of discovery i love it i love it and so um when we talk about reframing or reprogramming a person's attitude or their life vision or their discovery uh, and I know that you've you've already kind of hit on this. Um, what is like the number one most important thing to number one um, tap into that sense of adventure, that awareness that you just talked about, and that discovery? Like, what's the one most important thing to help our people with that if they're having trouble? Is is to use their imagination, Glenn. Is to dream again. Is to go back to when we were children, where we didn't allow what was perceived as limitations to stop us from drawing those things, dreaming those things that we wanted to do, right? When we were kids, uh, there was no one to tell us it's not possible. So what I believe is the number one asset that we have is our imagination. Dream again, spend time, turn off the phone, turn off all the distractions and just sit down and let your mind go again about what is it that you would truly love to do. And don't worry about the how. I love it. I'm trying to remember. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it, right? That was mm-hmm. from the great Willy Wonka. Um, yes. All right. So now what, um, and there's no place I know that can live in your imagination, something like that. I, I just love that song. If, if you guys want to get happy, go listen to Gene Wilder sing that song. It's so beautiful. Yes. And there's nothing more powerful than your imagination. And as Les said, um, uh, jump and grow your wings on the way down, right? Jump being the imagination. Let's talk about when you were 10 years old. Were you in Flint, Michigan at 10? I want to know if you remember your teacher. And in that third or fourth grade time frame in your life, was there a day or a week or an occurrence in your life that changed your attitude? And what was the attitude lesson you learned at 10? Sure. Uh, my parents were divorced by then, Glenn. Some things happened to me by uh, the woman who was entrusted to protect me that no good chef should have to go through. And so my attitude at 10 was, why does life hurt? Mm. And yet I had an angel at that time. I remember her name to this day, Glenn. Miss, Miss, not Mrs., Miss Schuster. And, and I believe, I know she knew what was going on at my home as far as my, my parents separating. She was, went out of her way to make me feel special to give me hope and to give me love and kindness and and she was my teacher in in fourth and fifth grade and so i started to have this conflict between life hurts and yet there are still uh beautiful wonderful nice people in the world that is so cool i'm getting ready to do a keynote speech for some teachers i may share that story of of really the hope the redemption Mm -hmm. the rescue that these teachers that these teachers who don't make a lot of money 
quite possibly the reason you wanted to be a teacher at Michigan was because of Miss Schuster. So uh, here's to her. Is she still with us or is she gone on to? You know, Glenn, that is a good question. And I think I'm going to actually look into that and find out. <laughs> Go give her a big Get Attitude podcast hug. Yes. What a beautiful story. All right, so now you're through high school. you got to be in Ann Arbor at 20. Go blue, go blue. Go. Number one was Michigan winning, was Shem Beckler the coach, and what was yes. your attitude lesson uh, at 20 years old? What was, what, what, what was the lesson attitude-wise for you? Yeah, the attitude lesson there at age 20 was that you can do whatever you want, right? If you just do things in a certain way and apply yourself that you can do whatever you want, un unstoppable. Really? And so you did whatever you wanted, whether it was good or bad maybe back then? <laughs> whatever, yes, Glenn. And as it turned out, as I, I matured and got older, I realized I did whatever I wanted and it nece wasn't necessarily the right thing to do, right? I made some some choices looking back that I, I would have maybe chosen differently had I had the awareness to know that, you know, mindset, attitude is everything. And so, yes. Um, I love it. Did I, you, be, did, I, did you yeah. beat Ohio State that your senior year? <laughs> oh, Glenn, Tom, now that, oh, that's painful. I believe that, that we did not, or it may have been one of the last times that we beat them. It's been so long. All right, but, we're going to uh, keep I will rooting. tell you, I refuse to go into the Notre Dame Stadium and the Ohio State Stadium on the away. Uh, my friends wanted to go on a tour of those stadiums. I sat in the car. <laughs> I love it. All right, so now you're out of college, right? And yes, sir. Um, what job were you doing at 30? And what was your attitude lesson? What was going on in your life at 30? And uh, I'd love to know what profession you were in at 30 and what was your attitude lesson? Sure, great. Uh, Glenn, I was actually running my own business then. I'd actually started my own printing and packaging company. Wow. And I had an attitude of, I can control my financial future, that I am an entrepreneur. And I think one of my, during my thirties, my favorite quote was by Carl Jung, right? I'm not what has happened to me. I, I am what I choose to become. Mm. And so I had that great attitude of, I am becoming an entrepreneur. I am an entrepreneur. Nice, nice. And so um, then the attitude lesson was just what you just stated with was what Carl you now say that again. Uh, I am I, not. I would say the attitude in my 30s was uh, do what you love to do. Right. Ah, I, cool. I was uh, called to be an entrepreneur. I did not nice. like working for anyone. I actually was fired from every job. So I, I realized that my true love was to control my own financial future. Now, I made some decisions along the way that didn't necessarily work out during my 30s, but the attitude was pursue your dream, go after what you truly love. And um, did you sell the business or did you have to shut it down? Shut it down, Glenn. Had a baby. I Atta shut it down. So then uh, we go through your 30s, you're an entrepreneur, and now what happens to you? you re do you remember your 40th birthday? Where were you and what's the attitude lesson? I was. I do remember. I was in Havana, Cuba, for my 40th birthday, and I, my attitude lesson was then is I want to see the world. Right? It's that there's there's a huge world out there of amazing people. I celebrated my 40th birthday in Havana, Cuba, uh, with a nice Cuban cigar. Nice. And back to that attitude of adventure. I love it. And then um, through the 40s, were you an entrepreneur? You were discovering, you were traveling, were you writing your book? Uh, what was going on in your 40s? In my 40s, I realized, Glenn, that I wanted more, that I started listening. I saw the movie The Secret, right? I saw, I heard Bob Proctor talk that I could, could if I could see it in my, my mind, I could hold it in my hand, that I could actually manifest and, and attract the things in my life that I really wanted if I just changed my thinking. Ah. I heard people like Les Brown tell me I got to be hungry, right? I got to, I got to uh, go after what I want. And so I made a decision in my forties that I was going to develop relationships and partnerships with the top people in the industry. And so that's what I did. I said, I had no idea how I was going to do it. So my forties were the attitude was, I am going to form these relationships, form these partnerships, no matter what. And with Bob Proctor, that's what happened. Les Brown, Akon, all of them. And it all started from a place of, doing little things uh, for big connections, I call it. Being unique, Glenn. It's, it's an attitude I took on in my 40s of what I call two people remove, where I believe, and I, can, I teach this all the time, that we are only one or two 
connections away from anyone on the planet. Uh, six degrees of separation doesn't work anymore. The universe, the world has changed. Technology has advanced too quickly. So I teach an attitude of two people removed and I can show it. I prove it all the time when I speak. Sure. I can show that if you have a goal, a vision, a dream that needs to get to somebody like a president, a, a queen even, billionaire, entrepreneur, doesn't matter, industry leader, it can happen. And, and that attitude in my 40s was no matter what. I love it, man. That's so cool. And then you hit 50. And uh, that's, I know when we talked about the kids and all that. Yeah. Attitude uh, of how do you change a diaper, Glenn? <laughs> Maybe starting over and rebirth was your attitude lesson at 50. Uh, share with us, the and, and I didn't want to say it for you, but if that's what it is, it is. But the attitude lesson at 50 and what was, because I think, didn't you just turn 60? No, no, Glenn. I'm only 55. So oh, I can't push yeah, you to 60. Only 55, Glenn. All right. Well, and cool. I, for all of your listeners, age is just energy. So I don't, I don't even worry about it. But my attitude at age 50 was, as God, Spirit, the universe is beautiful and grateful that I am, I am truly blessed, and that my attitude was to open up my eyes to see the beauty and the gifts that I've been gifted in these two beautiful, two beautiful children. I and, love it. And that, yeah. That's good. So um, thank you for taking a walk on our knowledge through the decade and, and talking to us about the adventure of a newborn baby, about why does life hurt when you were 10, about the ability to do anything when you got to 20, then the entrepreneurial spirit kicking in at 30, and then this adventure and discovery phase at 40, and then the gratitude and uh, spiritual gift phase at 50. What a beautiful life. What a great story. What a great uh, information and roadmap and plan. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching and listening, what a great opportunity to network with John, to get him on a 30-minute call if you've had enough. If you're sitting there saying, I've had enough, things got to change, this is a man that can do that for you. This is why he is on the Innovators and Influencers season of the Get Attitude podcast. John, if you would, um, I would love for you to give an overall sweeping um, good well wish or a message of hope to everybody that is uh, concluding this podcast with us. What would you like to tell the world and most of all our gappers about their potential, their destiny, and their uh, ability? Ability to form their own um, life the way they wish. Sure. Thank you, Glenn. And I would say to all of you that there is a way, there is a blueprint to achieve success, and it's all based on law. And that when you realize how truly powerful and magnificent you are, it doesn't matter what has happened to you or what you've been through, you are not through, that there is still time to change the course direction of your life, that you can have, be, and do whatever you want. And I will leave you and share with you one of my favorite quotes, which really sums up, I believe, this attitude, what Glenn is teaching all of you. And it's by Cahil Gibran. Uh, and he says, your living is determined not so much by what life brings to you as by the attitude you bring to life. Not so much by what happens to you as by the way your mind looks at what happens. And so when we learn to understand our mar magnificent, marvelous mind and how to master our thinking, then you can have each and every day a life beyond your wildest dreams that each day is a beautiful, magical, and marvelous day. And, and you can change the world. I love it. Change and, your world. And, Thanks, Glenn. Hey, thank you, John. And, and uh, if it, I'm going to get you for one more quote because uh, one, one of my favorite people to listen to and to study, and this gets back to John's energy. Michael Beckwith is somebody that I watched on mm -hmm. the Oprah inter interviews. I've read books. I've stuck. This man is unbelievably beautiful and calm. And John was spent time with him in Costa Rica. Like he came on, he just said it. And I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe that. Look at, I know you got a whole week of information, but could you give me one little Michael Beckwith thought or something that just rocked your world? Because that's what he does. Yeah. No, thank you for bringing that up, Glenn. And that again, goes back to when you have an unlimited mindset of anything's possible. Not only was I with Reverend Michael Beckwith for a week, I was with Martin Luther King III, his oldest son for a week. And it was an absolutely, truly powerful amazing week. And he said during that week, he said, what if every morning you woke up and said the entire universe is for me? He said, don't look for your dreams to become true. Look to become true to your dreams. And, and so 
I'll leave you with that quote from, from the Reverend. That is fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Gappers, thank you so much for following us live. This episode will drop in three to four weeks. We were with the great John Tallarico. All you got to do is go to the million or million in you.com if you'd like to talk with him. If you'd like to begin to bridge the gap from who you are to who you want to become. John, thank you for being on our award winning podcast, The Gap. And we will see you on the next episode of the Get Attitude Podcast. Thank you, Glenn. Congratulations. Thanks, brother.